What is going on guys? My name is Chase and welcome back to Intelligent Money Investing. And today we are going to talk about a really important dividend metric, dividend ratio that not very many people talk about and it's not a metric that's shown on Robinhood or other brokerages that commonly that I have seen so far. Before we get into that, I want to ask you guys and kind of challenge you guys to see if we can get 25 likes on that video on this video. That would be absolutely awesome. You guys have been showing me a ton of support lately, and I really appreciate it so much. And it really, the likes just kind of show me that you guys are digging the content, and that kind of really helps out the channel and help, helps us grow here at Intelligent Money Investing. So, now without further ado, let's get into this video. So, the ratio that we're going to be talking about is yield on cost. So, this is a very important dividend investing ratio because. Like I made a, I made a video about a month ago talking about how dividend yield doesn't matter. And my main point there was that your current dividend yield is not a big deal. But what you're really focused on is what that dividend yield is going to look like 10 years, 20 years from now, when you actually need that dividend income to rely on, hopefully, from or help you out when you're a dividend investor and you're kind of using those dividends for expenses. So a great example that I wanted to talk to you guys here, kind of just to show you what that yield on cost is, is Abvi. Because do you guys know, I've talked about Abvi plenty of times. It is my, or it used to be my biggest single stock position. And it's also my biggest total return so far with up 57%. But with Abvi, my average cost was $66 here. 66.09 to be exact. Uh, I calculated these numbers about a couple days ago. So I don't actually have, I'm about a dollar and a half short of the market value, but that market price doesn't really matter. But our, my yield on cost, so Avi recently raised its dividend. When I got into it, it was about a 62 cent dividend per quarter. Now it's at about 94 cents per quarter. So that is about a, I don't know, 40% raise so far, 50, 30%, 40% raise so far. And that allows a higher, like when I got into it, its dividend yield was much lower. And its dividend yield now, as, as its price, is about 3.74%. But what my dividend yield is essentially from what I paid because of my cost, my average cost is $66. So my yield based on that cost is 5.81%. And this metric isn't shown that often because it's not super easy to calculate and it's individual for everyone. Like my, like if you got bought an AVI at 120, your yield on cost is going to be lower than it's current than the current yield. But since I bought in at $66, my yield on cost is much higher than its current dividend yield, if that makes sense. So essentially, when you're calculating this, you're going to want to take your dividend uh, payout that's going to come for the entire year. This is much easier to calculate on a uh, stock than an ETF because stocks have a little bit more consistent of a dividend payout uh, number because ETFs kind of fluctuate. But my, it's about 92, 94 cents here. And so times four, 384, and then divide that by your average cost. And that's going to give you your yield on cost. Now, yield on cost is really what you're worried about because that really shows you what your growth is. And like in, let's say in 20 years, I'm, I could be getting back 20% a year just in dividends. Like a 5.8% return, if you did that in the stock market, you're doing a little bit under the average 8% S&P 500 per year. Like that, that's historically what it's performed. But just about 6% just in dividend is absolutely fantastic if they can sustain it. So that's definitely one thing you want to think about because when you get that dividend growth, that allows you to just beat the S&P 500 if that dividend is sustained pretty much automatically. And then you can also have equity returns and equity gains and stuff like that. Maybe there's other special dividends because they're doing the company's doing so well. And really what investing in such a strong company allows you to do is a strong growing company is that it allows you to increase that payout. It, it allows you to raise every year. It allows you to increase the amount you're getting off of that initial cost because that's really what you want. If you were to go into a job and you were to make, let's say, $60,000 a year just flat, but you're never going to get a raise, that's probably something not something you'd be interested in when you can get a job maybe for $40,000 a year, but every year you're going to make 10% more, 10% more, and then you're going to be crushing that 60000 number in just a few years. So that's kind of my philosophy be behind this yield on cost ratio. I really didn't know about this until another popular YouTuber, uh, PPC Ian. He makes absolutely fantastic dividend uh, stock breakdowns. I 
100% recommend his channel if you haven't subscribed to it yet. He's blowing up right now. Great channel. He makes a huge emphasis on uh, yield on cost. And this is kind of a ratio that I was looking for when I did make that video for why dividend yield doesn't matter. But I didn't even know about it until recently. So this is going to be the metric that I'm looking for predominantly going forward with my dividend stocks. I'm looking for that yield on cost to be as high as possible because I have as much potential as possible. Because I, I'm pretty confident that a stock like Abby, maybe a stock like Apple, uh, is going to probably Microsoft, these dividend growth stocks are going to pay out much higher. And then you want to get in with a lower average cost and then have that payout get just raise and raise every year. That's why I don't really advocate for stocks like Ford or something like that, which don't really like have that much room for a ton of growth. But, uh, but do pay a f high dividend yield right now. Who cares about your 5% dividend yield right now if it's going to be 5% forever? I'd much rather get a 15% yield on cost down the, down the road than a 5% uh, yield on cost down the road because it's really not changing much. So that's what I've got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about my explanation or if I misspoke and kind of messed up a term here, leave them down below. I love interacting with people in the comments. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and like the video if you thought this was helpful. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you guys in the next video.